Hello, my name is Ian McCall and this is another of the series of videos from the Demoscopy Made Simple blog on uh, today, clues to a melanoma. Now, this is an important uh, video because these clues are the things you look for if you see that a lesion has more than one color and more than one pattern. And all you need is uh, a clue to melanoma to uh, make you cut a lesion out. So let's have a look at these clues. We've gone over them obviously before, but let's just uh, put them together here in the one section. So clues to melanoma. Let's make this just a touch bigger. Thick lines reticular or branched, especially peripherally. That's where you've got your activity, that's where you've got the uh, clones of cells uh, forming and um, growing along the dermoepidermal junction. So you get your thick lines reticular or branched. Now lines parallel ridges, this is the classic pattern of malignancy on the palms of the hands, soles of the foot. Lines radial or pseudopod segmental, again this question of uh, rapid growth of cells in, uh, in nests. Gray or blue structures generally indicates an invasive melanoma. Uh, there's both orthokeratosis and dermal melanin, and it's the combination that gives you these gray uh, and blue structures, or sometimes a bit of white. Gray dots, that usually indicates uh, melanin, melanophages in the dermis. There's regression, regression in any pigmented lesion. You should look at it very carefully. Black dots or clods peripheral. Again, these are nests of rapidly growing cells, so they uh, merit some attention. Of course, uh, a growing nevus will often show this feature. A spitz nevus will certainly show this uh, feature as well, but they're usually, um, the clods are usually uh, fairly regular in size and well distributed around the lesion, not just in one area. Eccentric structureless areas. I don't have a good example of that. Um, it just indicates that something's happened in that area. Usually it's a feature of regression. Uh, white lines. This uh, was the old negative network and I think it's just a, again a feature of fibrosis in the dermis. Polymorphous vessels, especially with dot vessels, we've said that's a real feature for a melanotic melanoma. Uh, these polymorphous vessels with dot vessels and that should really make you think if you're looking at a lesion that's pink that it's a it's only melanotic melanoma. And then again, varying shades of pink within the lesion. Scott Menzies sort of likes this as a, a good indicator of uh, a suspicious lesion that should be biopsied. So let's have a look at some of these uh, cases. Okay, first of all, thick lines reticular are branched, especially peripheral. Here you've got here, your thick lines reticular. Um, and they're certainly peripheral. In this little bit here, you've got a pink structureless area. So more than one color and structures equal suspicious, the clues to melanoma, thick lines reticular peripheral, and pink structureless. You find most of these have more than one clue. What about the other lines? We've done lines reticular thick peripherally. These are uh, lines parallel ridges, you know, on the sole of the foot. There's the uh, acral antigenous melanoma here. These are the pigmented ridges, and these white areas here are the furrows. So you've got the thickened pigmented ridges and the narrower clear furrows either side of them. And this is an acral antigenous melanoma. This sort of shows it nicely up here in this particular image. I mean, you wouldn't go past the clinical anyway. You don't need a dermatoscope to make a diagnosis of melanoma and that. Okay, lines radial or pseudopod segmental. Let's have a quick look here. These are your lines radial. Used to be called streaking um, at the periphery of the, of the lesion. Of course, there are some other things here too. We get some peripheral dots. We've got some blue structures. Um, an ulcerated area within it as well. Thick and black network, but this is more within the lesion rather than at the periphery. But it was still an invasive melanoma. So lines radial peripheral 
certainly a feature of rapid cell growth and can be a feature of clue to melanoma. This is another one. But here we're seeing the peripheral dots and globules. The, the, this, these were lines radial as pseudopods, you know, with a knob in the end of them connected to the main tumor mass there. Again, you've got some lines radial peripheral here, peripheral streaking, some blue-gray, blue-white structures here. This again was an invasive melanoma. So, gray or blue structures, obviously. This is another thing here. You see this here. It generally indicates that you've got some deep cells here. That's likely to be an invasive melanoma if you see this. You've got your lines reticular around about it. You've got a blue clod there as well. That was the clinical. An invasive melanoma. Gray-blue structures within the lesion. Gray dots. <coughs> now we said that uh, gray dots usually indicate some degree of regression and this was the case here. There's the clinical, this is this area here of the gray dots, like you've seen this image before in one of the other um, presentations. So, and you've got a white structureless area in the center here where you've uh, had significant regression. So, this was an invasive melanoma with regression. Multiple colors, more than one pattern of structures, and gray dots as a clue to melanoma. Now, clue six, black dots are clods peripheral. Well, I think I've shown you in the, some of the others, these uh, peripheral dots. This was one that uh, wasn't quite so obvious, but there are dots and clots peripheral in this um, as well, indicating actively growing nests of cells. And this was a melanoma. But sometimes, yeah, as I've said here, you can get um, some brown uh, clots peripheral. Um, these represent nests at the dermoepidermal junction may also be a significant sign of melanoma in adults, especially if segmental and varying in color and size. Now this was one. Uh, this was the lesion here. When you looked at it, you had a lot of these brown clods. Now, I agree that some of them are central here, but there's a fair number that are peripheral as well. Um, and this uh, also was a melanoma. So remember this particular picture as a feature of, uh, of melanoma. Now, eccentric structureless areas. I haven't got a good example of this. Once I get one, I'll put it in the actual blog itself. Um, so I apologize for that. I'd like to have shown you it. But clue 8 was white lines. I said that these represented some degree of fibrosis in the dermis. This was a clinical view of an image, uh, courtesy of Con Pappas. These are your white lines in here. People used to call this negative network. I think we see it a little bit better in the next image. There we go. These are the white lines in between the pigmented areas here. Um, and this was more than one structure and color with several clues to melanoma. I've said there are some blue-gray structures there. There's peripheral thickened lines reticular there as well. Um, and this was reported as a melanoma in situ arising in a dysplastic nevus. You might not have expected much in the way of dermal fibrosis in a melanoma in situ, though, to give you white lines. I still think we're th we still don't really know what a negative network is. Then, clue nine, polymorphous vessels, especially with dot vessels. Now, let's try and make this just a touch bigger. Because we said that, you know, vessels in general are difficult and you use them last as a clue. But sometimes with uh, an amelanotic melanoma or a hypomelanotic one, you don't have a lot. Now this one, you did in fact have some thickened lined reticular here. Um, not much, mind you, in comparison to the other lined reticular roundabout. But the worst variation in vessels, coiled vessels, some dot vessels, um, it was felt there were some white lines in this. I'm not so sure when, look, when I'm looking at that. And there were some linear vessels down here as well. So polymorphous vessels with some dot vessels. The diagnosis was an in situ hypomelanotic melanoma. So vessels are useful. 
polymorphous vessels with dot vessels. And then lastly, the varying shades of pink. Let's make that a bit smaller. You've seen this one before. This was this desmoplastic type melanoma. And here you just had varying shades of pink within this lesion. Difficult to see any vessels, pink structures. But these varying shades of pink um, can be a reasonable marker for some amelanotic melanomas. So keep that in mind. And let's finish off with just some multiple combined clues. I mean, this melanoma here, you've got a lot of things, some back clods, uh, dots or clods, peripheral, blue-gray structures, um, some lines, radial, peripheral, and even some polygons within this. So this, in fact, was uh, a, a melanoma, obviously. I can show you the clinical. I think there was an invasive element within this as well. And lastly, let's look at this one. Make this a touch smaller as well. There's your clinical picture down here. And certainly highly suspicious looking at it. And it's got, you know, black structureless and blue-gray structures here, pink structureless uh, here, peripheral. Uh, perhaps I have got a peripheral um, a structureless area polymorphic vessels and dot vessels if we enlarged that up and you had a close look at them. And uh, then even these pseudopods segmental in this particular one as well. So I don't think you'd have any trouble uh, diagnosing that as a melanoma. Not clinically, but certainly has a lot of features there dermatoscopically as well. So clues to melanoma are important. You should be able to run through in your mind straight away what the, uh, the 10 clues are. These are the 10 that I certainly use. And we'll revert to them uh, quite considerably when we're going through individual lesions, which is what we'll do for the rest of the uh, videos that you'll see in this series. So thanks very much for looking at this, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Bye-bye.